which I just not seen the film for about 12 years. And when I saw it right now, I just went like, my God, I better not do another fantasy film again because nothing's going to compare to this. Hello, everyone. Talal Azim here from Popcorn and Soda. And I have the privilege today to discuss the upcoming release of the 4K restoration of 2006's acclaimed classic, The Fall, which will be available to stream exclusively on Mubi starting September 27th, 2024 in Canada. We're fortunate enough to be joined by the director of the film today, Mr. Tarsam Singh. Mr. Singh, thank you so much for your time. How are you doing today? Hanging in there. Yeah, it's great to hear. I'd like to start off by congratulating you on the upcoming 4K restoration of the film. These kinds of releases are always so exciting because it gives new life to classic projects. How are you feeling about the upcoming 4K restoration of the film? Very good. The film was always what it is. It just want more eyeballs on it for more people to tell me how shit or great it is. <laughs> now, as a director and a visionary of the film, I'm really fascinated by your perspective on revisiting your past work. When you see the 4K restoration of The Fall, a project that was released nearly 20 years ago at this point, from which lens do you view it? Is it Tarsum Singh, the director, or are you able to watch it as a fan of cinema at this point? I don't know if that will ever happen because you're so close to a project like this. So for me, this very little has changed. I just not seen the film for about 12 years. And when I saw it right now, I just went like, my God, I better not do another fantasy film again because nothing's going to compare to this. So it was just one of those. And I was actually very close to move, doing a film called Butterfly. And I literally saw this while doing the restoration. And I went like, nah, just it'll always get compared to this. Just move on and do something else. So for me, I actually walked away from a project that was quite fantastical. And again, it had a child and a child's perspective. And I just thought like, nah, this is a one-off. I think move to something else. Now, do you find that being a director, you're ever able to really watch whether it's your own work or any cinema with a lens that's not, you know, through the eyes of a filmmaker and that critical view of, you know, I should have done this or that. Do you find that's like a work in progress for you or start where you're starting to enjoy more and more as a fan or that's always, like you said, going to be something that's going to be with you? Day to day, it's different. When you're in the right movie, like you watch a movie and you go like, I did that, you'll kind of forget. Even if it's one day before, one day after, and then you're in a different movie and you're just super critical of everything. But I've never looked at anything and said like, oh, I should have done that or I should have done this. That is beyond water under a bridge. It's kind of impossible. The time arrow with all the entropy is not going to go the other way. So, Mr. Singh, we're living in this digital age where content can be consumed at a click of a button 24-7, and there's going to be a whole new audience that's going to discover the fall for the first time. So can you talk about the importance of a platform like Mubi where it gives audiences an alternative to watch independent and international films? Uh, well, it's very good for me. All, all I want to make sure is that I get more eyeballs on this because right now, in the time that I made the film, not too many film people knew basically how to make good images or big images or anything like that. It wasn't there. Right now, anybody who has a telephone, I mean, the telephone can do 4K for you, just need the right lenses. So you can do that. In the end, it becomes right now, it's become just about distribution. How do you get eyeballs? How do you get, apart from your grandmother and your two friends to see it? If you're going to make it for a bigger audience, you better be aware of how, how do you get that? So it's become about the platform. So no, it's very good. It means a lot more films, means a lot more shit and a lot more good stuff. And just what separates the shit from Shinola? I have no clue. Clue. You just make it and then you figure it out. Well, one thing I find really interesting is, uh, Mr. Singh, you have a history of working with young actors who went on to and currently are doing amazing work. Lee Pace, what do you recall the most about your time working with Lee? Uh, well, they were. it took me a long time to find the girl. But when I found her, she was the reason I was making it immediately. But I, need, I thought I'd have to go to film school or something to find a person that nobody knew because we were going to lie so much about the character. You know, we, we just told everybody he can't walk. It's for this thing. He's going to be in bed for three months. He's never going to be able to walk. We changed the script to say that in the fantasy world, it's about the dad. And we changed everything to go there. So for me, when I found Lee, I just knew, one, he has such a great voice. Second, he's such a lovable character. I wanted the girl to fall in love with him. And then the moment I saw her, I just thought she was so pure and her questions were so correct and she had the right amount of naivety. And that is a function of who she is and where she was that particular time. 
And I told my brother, in three months, she's a different person. You make the movie now or you'll be looking for another nine because it took me nine years to find that child. So I just said, when you find the child, it'll be a different child. And I will always hope with something like that, it's a relative. Because whenever I work with them, when there's no money and you can really abuse the children, I prefer family. I'll take my you know, sister's kids or anything. That's how I do the music videos when I did you know, the Deep Forest one with my niece and all that. I did all of that like that. So for me here, none of them were in the correct age group and I was waiting forever. They were never right. And when I saw her and I just said, she was so malleable and ductile and, 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 and receptive and so emotionally invested in what she heard and so believable and naive that she was in the perfect state there. And I knew in six months, three or four months, she'd be a different person. Now, throughout this whole process of the 4K restoration that will be coming on movie exclusively here in Canada, is there a memory or something that you recall from a day on set that just came back to your mind, just reminiscing about the good days during the filming of this uh, movie? I, I have had good days for the last 35 years. I've been on a holiday. I keep saying I, I love filming. I the, ask that. That's why I always considered myself a hack because most people who are really admire and love, they hate filming. They love coming up with the idea. They love editing. And I'm the only guy that loves being on a set and I love filming. So I've been making advertising, which a lot of people are here. But if you see the ads, I get to do what I want and I do incredible stuff and I learn from it. So I look at those ads. So I always said that I'm like a prostitute in love with this profession. I'd fuck them for free, but they give me money and I say, thank you and move on. So for me, I wouldn't say like reminiscing about the old days. Every day has been great for 35 years. Except this awesome. last week. Tough. I just came out of surgery, but it's all good now. Urine is coming out and I'm shitting good. <laughs> well, Mr. Saying, uh, I'm wishing you and your health very good. And, you know, I know I, things can be difficult when those kinds of things happen. Well, I'm wishing you the best of that. And, you know, once again, Mr. Saying, I want to congratulate you on the upcoming 4K restoration of the fall. Uh, it's a Thank film you. that I really enjoyed. And I know returning audiences and new audiences will feel the same. And, Selfishly, sir, uh, I want to thank you for all that you've done for South Asian representation as well in this medium. Being a person from South Asia myself, I know there's doors that are open because of filmmakers like yourself, creators like yourself. I wish like I yourself. could shut up so I could just get in there and make the films just myself. But not a box you can put back in. So welcome. <laughs> Do well. Most, thank you so much, sir. I truly wish you all the best and I appreciate your time today. Thanks. Thanks.